Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to get to the crown. Now before we do, I want to finish up our moldings so I show, can show you that. Now remember I told you how we glued the little wafer in? Well, I kind of did it a little bigger than what we need so you definitely see how to do this. It's very simple. So let's take a look at that and then we'll get it to our crown. Okay, obviously you can see I kind of left my wafer slightly large. And remember I told you to leave the little center point because this is how we trim them down. We don't want to get too complicated. Now again, you don't have to leave that much, but I just want to emphasize. Take your same Forstner bit and drill it down. Chisel clean up, and we got a reinforced mite. That simple. Okay, can't get any easier than that, can it? Okay, now let's get to our crown. Now, if you recall, I told you when we were doing this, if you've got a large, I've got a 12 inch chop saw miter saw, whatever you want to call it. And as you're well aware, I glued up my crown in one piece. But I also told you if you didn't have a large chop saw, not to do that. Because your table saw is not going to be tall enough to cut this. But we can cheat a little bit if you've got a 10 inch saw. So we're going to come back and look at this crown. Okay, guys, what I've done is I've turned the case upside down. Now, you don't have to do that. And I've got it setting on some supports, just something to get it up off where I can slide my crown in and not under and around. But this also gives a good camera angle where you can see. The other thing I've done is I've gone to my chop saw, miter saw, whatever you want to call it, and I've confirmed my angle is fitting my case. So we're good here. Now, to keep me oriented, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my corner and I'm going to put my mark right at the corner And I'm going to put me a little scratch line to make sure I don't cut it in the wrong direction. You can do that pretty easy, you know. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this one corner. So I'm going to go to the chop saw and make my cut to start the crown. Okay, I've made my, my cut, and I'm fitting well. I'm ready to go here. So what I'm going to do now, this is my critical one because this is the one I got to have just right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my line, make my mark. Now the thing we have to remember, we're going to be cutting in this direction. And but this is the point right here. This is our this is our critical point where we're going to pass through right on the point. And that's also going to be the easiest point to, to see with the crown made up like this. Let's go to the chop saw and look at it. All right, with my chop saw at 22, at my angle, which is 22 and a half, I actually want to cut this just a little bit long. I don't want to cut it dead on the money on the first shot. So I'm just going to cut it. And here's the cool thing about the crown and this, and, and the way this is glued up. I've got a straight edge that I index off of. It's just a straight chop, except that I've got to just go my, my, my 22 and a half degree angle is the only angle I've got to worry about. All right. Now, I'm just going to ease in on my mark. 
sneak up on it. Now while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and cut the uh, other angle. Okay, I'm fitted up and I'm looking nice. Wasn't difficult. I'm going to cut it off to length. Then I'm going to show you how I'm going to glue it. Then we're going to go look at some other ways. Okay, to guys, time to glue it. Now, I'm not going to glue it on the case. Now, I'm probably going to hear about this a little bit, but I'm not going to put a biscuit in there. Here's why. To, to clamp this is difficult. you got to rig up all kinds of things. Here's a little tip you can do. What you can do is set this in here, and when we clamp this, I'm going to be clamping it right here down to the bench. But what I can also do is take me some long screws, put them out here, partially in, because this is not going to be seen. All this is going to be hidden. Give me another one in here, right across from it. You already know what I'm going to do, don't you? Then, when I clamp this, once I have it clamped, what I can do is I can come across that a little bit and get me a little bit of cross pressure. A little bit tight. Now, you're thinking, okay, all he's going to do is do a butt joint on this. That's just not going to be tight enough. You're right, it's not. Remember that wafer thing? That just works all too nice. Once this is dry, this joint is dry, it's, still, it's, it's not going to be super strong, but it's going to be tight. We'll take all of this off, and then we can drill it, and we can put a larger wafer in there. Now comes the issue of our crown. How do we reinforce that? Back up underneath here, in here, you can do a lot of whittling and whatever and make you a little wooden call because that's not seen either, nor does it interfere. This top corner right here does. This is our fit point. But I'm going to tell you what, and I got this from, from an old, old piece of, I mean, this thing is really old. And what they did is they took a piece, they looked like a piece of burlap. And oftentimes I'll just use a, a good heavy cloth, and I soak it in glue and fold it up two or three times, and I mash it up in there. Works sweet. Not pretty, but it reinforces that joint well. You can also drill it, you know, and run a little toothpick up in it or something, but you just don't need to. I'm going to glue this.
All right, guys, you see what I got going on here? This this case, this crown's got a little bit of twist in it. Kind of one of the issues with having this stuff lay around. Anyway, and what I can see is I'm tight here, and I got just a little wee gap there. So what I'm doing is picking up on that, and it's going to ease me a little wedge in there. Once I get this joint tight, as well as that one, even if I got a little bit of twist to it, when it goes on the case, it'll pull itself back into position. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. This one's doing fine. It looks like it's my wax paper. I think a little bit got up in that joint. I want to make sure it's right. I want to make sure I got enough glue too. If you take something apart like this, put a little bit more glue on there because this end grain is going to soak it up. Now you can see the problem here. See where this has got a twist to it? That's another place this clamp's going to help me a lot. I'm reaching up in there pretty good. You know something else can cause like this is even though we've glued this, see I took that loose and I've loosened this one, kind of a balancing act here to get everything together and let the glue set. All right, I'm tight there. I want some more glue in that. When you lose that, when you lose that initial glue tack, get some more glue in there. That suction from that glue will actually help hold it. And then once it sets and we get our reinforcements in there, it's not going anywhere. All right, I'm going to let it dry. Everything's getting tight. All right. Okay. Now here's the crown glued up. Now one of the things I want to talk to you about here is you notice when I We'll clamp this down on the bench. I had to use, I got a little twist in it, so I had to use a little wedge. And I did my screw thing and I pulled it and one corner it wanted to pull away a little bit. So I had to clamp it to the bench and just shove everything up nice and tight. But it made a really nice joint. It's good and tight. Not an issue. But here's the thing I want to explain to you. So many woodworkers want you to give them do exactly this and it will work. That's not woodworking. That's not reality. Every piece of wood will behave a little bit differently. One of the things with this show is trying to teach you how to think on your feet because you have to. Okay, now see a lot of guys when they found out they had a little twist in this crown, they had freaked out. Not the case, because when this goes up on top and it's pulled down, it's going to be just fine. Why did it twist? Who knows? We've got tiger maple, we got grain running across, we got curl running up and down. We've got a glued, it's set around a little bit from the time we did it till we film it. Who knows? It's wood. It does things that, well, it, it's kind of like a lot of people you know, me included. We do a lot of things that, you know, after we've done it, we're kind of like, what was I thinking? Well, wood kind of does that too. So you have to learn to improvise. Think a little bit outside the box to make things work. Now, with that said, 
let's go now and look at, remember I told you guys, if you had a big chop saw, and now I've got a 12 inch and it cut this just fine. But see, you've got a, you're not going to be able to cut it on a 10 inch blade, on a 10 inch table saw, because the max it's going to cut is 3 inches. 2 and 7 eighths on most, a lot of them. And see, right now you're at about 3 and an eighth. So you would not have cut this on a table saw. You'd have gotten close, and yeah, you could have cut it and then taken a little back saw and just trimmed what little bit it didn't get. But what I want to show you is the alternative. Now, the alternative to this is, is to simply cut your flat board, your, your, your very top. Cut it and miter it exactly like we did the moldings. No difference. They're just bigger. You know, put it on, set, set, your, set your angle. Okay, the same one you've been using all the way through. And you simply miter this to fit the case. Now, you gotta be careful here. Because your fit is gonna be determined by how much, see this is our case right here. This, this is where it's gonna go against the case. Now, when I check this, I'm at uh, two and 13 sixteenths. You might be a little bit different, and that's okay. But what we wanna do is make sure that we have enough space from this point out to overhang and so that our we have room to get the crown in and as i recall but i'll double check here this is yeah this is five inches but you know again if you cut that piece and you have a little deviation or you route the profile and it don't come out just right and you got to trim that and it's four and seven eighths or four and three quarters and, and you've got enough room for it to set up on top of there, you're fine. Don't get in a panic. You know, it's going to work just fine. Okay, so let's understand. Just miter the flat, the, the board that sits on top. Miter it and get it to fit. Set it on top of the case. You know, you can reach in here and put a clamp on it and make sure you're even out here going around your case. Now you can fit the crown. Now, cutting the crown is the exact same setup, except now a lot of you guys know this, but there's a lot of new guys. You, you can try to set this on 22 and a half and then try to set your back angle and all of these things. What a pain. What is it guys, it's 31.65 or something to make that, except no, that's on a 40, that's if you're doing the 45. Anyway, here's the fastest, slickest way to do it. Use your miter gauge. Make sure you've got a tall fence. If you don't, screw one on. And set this, crown on exactly like you're going to be cutting it. No different. Exact, excuse me, exactly like it's going to set on the case. In other words, what I'm telling you is make sure that when you set this up against that, you're not like this. You, you're setting dead on your flat of the 45 you cut. Make sure you're flat down here. Then cut it. Because this is th what that does is just automatically sets your um, it sets your angle. Except we got a problem. I'm in the wrong direction, and I'm making a big emphasis over this so you get this. When you cut this, let me show it to you. If I cut it, 
the problem is my side angle is angled out and I need it to angle in so that my piece fits. So what I have to do is I have to change direction. Watch what happens. Now here's the other place you have to be careful. Watch this though. Now, now I'm in the right, now I'm cut right. But my long point, which is my top, the upper point right here is when I make the cut, it's on the bottom. It's down on the fence, I mean down on the saw to get it right. Okay, to cut the opposing corner and your other side, I had to switch miter gauges because I got that metal fence and I really don't want to put that into my saw blade. But this is what, on a table saw, that's what will give you your cut. Now when you cut this, make sure the piece you take, off, you take off the end, make sure you've got enough that when you go to fit this, you're not going to have an issue. you got enough length. See what I'm showing you? I can't hold all this one time by myself, but anyway, it fits. Now I want to go to the chop saw and show you an alternative method. And one I think is a whole lot better. Okay, using this method, you can do it with a 10 or even an eight inch. I think you can do it with an eight, yeah, you can do it with an eight inch chop saw. So again, simply set the crown, the exact same thing we did on the table saw to where it's setting just like it will on the case. But again, your long point is always going to be at the bottom. See, this would set on the case just like that. Long point to the top. Then, I can, you know, just by moving back and forth, I can get my other angles a whole lot easier. Now you see what I'm showing you? What you got here, if you do it the opposite way, again, see how this angle is always wrong? Make sure you take some scrap, guys. Make sure you take some scrap and play with it. Because you, you can mess it up in a hurry. All right, again, what you want to do, let me just get a piece here to work with. I want to re-emphasize to you what you want to do is to, a good idea for you would be to take just a piece of wood, same width as your crown, just a scrap, and when you cut your 45s on your crown to cut an extra piece. Just cut a piece of scrap, it doesn't have to be coved and all that, but and practice with it just a little bit to get a feel for your angles. because they're not hard to mess up. See what you got? Then, to get your angle the same over here, it's just rever it's the same exact setup. So you just make sure you don't get your, you know, just make sure you don't get your short, short side and long sides met. Now, Cut the other side, obviously, this will be the way it would set. Obviously, this is not going to work. This is, you're going to have a left and you're going to have a right. 
Okay, so to get this, we got to go the opposite direction. That means I can move it, but I'm, let me see here. Yeah, I got to go to the other side to get it. I gotta, I gotta flip it. See, I gotta think about it. I gotta flip it, and then I gotta come this direction. Now I'm standing back out of the way, so you can see this. Can, can you see this? And this isn't the safest way to do this thing. You can clamp it right here if you want, but I'm out of the way. Nor normally, if I'm in front of this, I'm, I've got a good grip and I'm in control. I'm a little bit not quite that way here, so don't you do this. And that gives you the other side. Whatever it is on the ground. Okay. So just take your time. Get a feel for it. You definitely got a left and a right. Cut and crown. Not hard. Just got to think about it a little bit. Stay focused on what you're doing. And again, that scrap piece to play with a little bit. That's a pretty good idea. I know. You know, if anything out there, I can cut miters just perfect. As long as I can stay oriented in my brain whether I need to flip it or flop it. And that flipping and flopping thing can get kind of tough. And the next thing you know, if you flip instead of flop, then you come back to that length thing. And when you got to change from a flip to a flop, then the length ain't right. Did y'all get that? I hope so. Crowns. Let's go back to the drawers.